Hello, welcome to Doodle Bliss with Jane Midday. Today we are going to talk a little bit about using shading and highlights when we color a design. So I'm going to start out by drawing a little mushroom here that we will use as an example. Start by drawing the cap of the mushroom and its little stem. They usually have a little sort of a frill right there. And then let's add a couple of leaves like that. Now just so you can see it better, I'm going to go ahead and use a pen outline so that everything uh, will show up really good in the video. And also, I uh, like the look. That's something I do a lot in my own sketchbooks. So what I have here is a fine liner pen with waterproof ink. This one is made by Rotring, but I also like uh, Pigma Micron. Those are a little bit easier to get. So let's do this. Draw this simple outline. We're going to draw some spots on here because these red toadstools have nice white spots that make them look really pretty. And here's the frill. And the base. And here are some leaves. In the center vein of the leaves. One of the nice things about these kind of fine liner pens, instead of using a dip pen with ink, is that they dry really quickly so that you can go ahead and erase the ink line. So I've got a Tombow plastic eraser here. We'll erase that. Now we're going to do uh, the coloring with watercolor today. And I have here, uh, this is a watercolor paint set that is made by Holbein. It's a mess, but you can tell that's because I love it and use it so much. So put that over there. And my favorite paint brushes are these silver ultra mini designer rounds. They have a really nice uh, sharp point on them. So let's start with the red base at the top. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to wet the area a little bit here because I want to make a nice blend. I don't want a completely solid color. So if I wet this with some clean water, then what I can do is start with a little bit of orange up there at the top. Don't you just love how watercolor moves on paper like that? And then we'll go in with the red and have it blend, painting around around the, the white spots there. Filling that in. It's okay that I got a little bit in there. That's that's fine. We can lift that up later. One of the nice things about watercolor is that you can lift it up once it's dry to, to help get rid of any marks that get in the wrong place. I've got a slightly darker red here that we'll put at the bottom. So that's making a really nice blend because I'm working wet into wet. So let's get that going. Okay. 
And here we go, just a little bit more. So let's dry that. I'm going to blow it with the, with the dryer here a little bit. Okay, now we're going to work on uh, the stem and the leaves. So I've got here, I like to use fairly warm shadows when I am uh, painting plants, things that are growing. So I've mixed together a little bit of raw umber and a little bit of... Um, indigo to make a warm gray. So let's put that under there. Now you'll notice what I'm doing here. I've decided that my light source is going to be coming from this left-hand side of the page. So that means that the right-hand side of the page is the shadow side. So that's something you need to keep in mind as you're uh, coloring in the image is you want the light source to be consistent. And let's get it a little bit under there. And I'm gonna put, I've got clean water on the brush now, and you can use that to blend the shadow. Like that. Put in a little bit more. Here we go. Okay. So let's blow that again. Let that dry. with using a blow dryer is that sometimes it blows the paint in directions where you really don't want it to go. So let's paint a couple of these leaves here. We'll just start like this and do the base color. There we go, like that. Now while that's drying, I'm just gonna, I've got a clean, damp brush here. I'm gonna go in and look, you can lift up. I've got my little tissue here. You can lift up where that paint went in the wrong place and remove it. Now I'm gonna do um, the shadow and the highlights on the top of the mushroom to show you how I do that. So what I've got here is I've mixed together a shadow red. I've got um, some alizarin crimson here and I mixed it together with a little sepia and that makes a nice dark red. 
So we'll put that going up this way. Because remember, your, your light source is coming from over here. And I've got clean water on the brush again, and we will use that just to blend that shading. real nice like that. Now for the leaves, one side of the leaf is going to be facing towards the light and the other side of the leaf is going to be in shadow. So I've got a little bit of shadow green there. We'll just put that like that and like that okay time to zap it again Now the last things that we're going to do is highlights and shadows, the, the cast shadow. Now a lot of people ask me what I use for highlights and I use this. It is called Dr. Martin's Bleed Proof White. It is a kind of white gouache. You can use gouache, you can use white paint, but use titanium white. If you use zinc white, zinc white is transparent, titanium white is opaque. So that's a good distinction to know. You could even use um, a white paint pen. A lot of people like to use those, but see this comes in a little jar and you just use it on your brush like that. And so I'm gonna put a highlight on this side of the mushroom, like that. You can also use it if you want to cover mistakes, you can, like that. You don't have to. Um, you can add some on the leaf here, like this. There you go. And the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put a cast shadow underneath the mushroom. If you add a shadow to the bottom, that helps anchor your design onto the page. So I've got a little sepia watercolor here that I have really diluted so it's pretty liquid. And we're going to put it under the leaf like that, under the mushroom. And because the light is coming from this way, the shadow extends that way because it is a cast shadow, like that. So, one more time with Now we're gonna do just a couple more finishing touches here. 
Now these, see these white spots are in the shadow area, so they shouldn't be completely white. So I'm gonna use a little bit of the same shadow color that I used underneath there to fill those in. And add just a little bit more, make that just a little bit darker so that it pops a little bit more like that. And at this point, you can call it done if you want. If you like to keep adding things or if you want to use mixed media, sometimes what I like to do is add more details with colored pens. I like these uh, Imat because they are waterproof. And so I've got a, a green one here. See, it's a fine liner. And let's just add some leaf veins to the leaf. Like that. And you can keep going as much as you want, but I think for this video, we are gonna call this one finished. So this shows you, actually, well, spoke too soon. I need to blend my highlights a little bit so they're not a hard line. There we go. This shows you the concept of having the highlight on one side, the cast shadow to anchor your drawing to the page, and the shading on the other side of the object. I hope you enjoyed that. Join us again on Doodle Bliss. Thanks a lot.